Good to be talking about a win uh, for the Warrior team, which you got on Friday, 75-70 over Wayne State. Um, tell us a little bit about that game and, and what it was like to get that win this year. Well, I mean, one, it was a crazy week. Um, we were in quarantine since the previous Saturday. We had no practices during the week. Uh, we were waiting on PCR test results taken on Tuesday to come back to us all negative. Um, but we didn't know if we were going to get those results on Thursday or Friday. Um, we had to, uh, it was very challenging to plan for our longest uh, overnight trip of the season to Wayne, Nebraska. Uh, you know, it's about six and a half hours on a bus one way. Uh, but not having any, not having any definite idea when our results would come back and when and whether we would be released to play, let alone being prepared to play, mm -hmm. um, it, it was very challenging, very stressful. Um, we found out at ten o'clock Thursday morning, all, all of our test results came back negative. And uh, then we had to notify the bus company. We're leaving at two, had to notify the hotel. Um, and one thing that's really challenging that people may not realize or understand is that because of COVID, you can't just pull up to a fast food restaurant and jump off the bus and everybody go stand inside a restaurant and order your food. You can't do that. You've got to pre-order everything ahead of time, which means um 24 hour notice um you pay for it um and then you know we had done all of that and had our, our results not come in till late thursday afternoon or friday morning then everything gets pushed back so the logistics and dynamics of organizing and trying to plan a trip like that are just really chaotic and challenging but, you know, I, I give uh, my assistant on a words and Hannah McBlone all the credit in the world for having not one plan, but two or three plans and patience. Um, it takes a lot of, takes a lot of really good communication. Um, and that's probably one of the most frustrating things to this whole ordeal is that sometimes they're not, there's not as much communication on a regular basis um, coming to us in a timely fashion uh, um, that, you know, th that just makes it really, really difficult at times. But I'm really proud of our team. Um, you know, they, uh, you know, we've been getting better every week, but we've had We've had so many weeks in a row of sporadic practice time, um, play one game on a weekend, the other one get canceled, go into quarantine for four times. It's just been unbelievable. Um, you can't plan for it. Uh, you can't read a book that tells you how to handle it mentally. Uh, physically, you feel compromised at times because you, you've not you've been shut down from lifting, you know, for a week at a time. Uh, you've not had practice reps that give you confidence in what you're doing. Um, it's just really, really challenging. And I'm proud of our group for being shut down for a week and then having a uh, two hour notice that we're going to walk through some stuff uh, before we get on the bus against a team that has not missed one game or one practice the entire uh, time. And then you have a six and a half hour road trip. Um, we, we had, we had three players on our team that had only had two practices in two weeks. And one of them had to start a freshman at the point guard because at our shoot around on Friday, before we even got started, Emily Keek got hit in the head with a ricochet missed shot 
when they were just shooting till everybody got their shoes on and she got a concussion. So we lost her for the weekend uh, at our shoot around before we even got started. So it's just like, this is unbelievable. What could happen next? And for us to go out there and compete and play as hard as we did, um, we didn't handle the last two minutes very well as far as late game situations. We had two or three uh, silly turnovers. Um, I think we missed three free throws. We were up 10 with like two minutes to go and it got it down to four, but uh, we we hung on, found a way to win, uh, felt really good about it because everything was stacked against us going into this week. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the second night, I mean, we had, we had a good first half, but we could tell from the get go that we didn't have the same energy bouncing our legs that we did on Friday night. And we were still up for at halftime, but uh, defensively, we just, we were steps slow. Uh, we were getting beat to 50, 50 balls or loose, loose balls. Um, and then the second half, we just, we lost our legs. We could not make shots. Um, we had the same shots that we did, you know, the previous half and the previous game, but we just quit making shots. And uh, that game got away from us in the last, I don't know, four or five minutes. But uh, I, I was I was really proud of our group and what they, the character that they showed, the determination that they showed. Um, you know, we're, we're, like I said earlier, we're getting better. We aren't getting the results on a consistent basis that we want and expect. But it's like I told my staff, you know, consistency is what we are lacking and missing, but the expectation of being consistent is unrealistic when you consistently don't get to practice, you consistently don't get to play your games. Um, it's just, we're, we're just, we're trying to manage it and do the best that we can with what we have to work with and what time we're given to work with. Um, I told somebody earlier today that every day that you have a practice cancel, uh, in reality, you're being told this is one last day that you have to try to get better. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I love going, I love going to practice when we get to, because that is the most enjoyable part of going through this entire um, COVID situation. And it's not the same for everybody. I mean, COVID is everywhere, but not every school, every program is affected the same amount. And, um, <clears throat> you know, we're, we're very strict here. We're very conservative here. Um, and, and it, and it hamstrings us sometimes with the opportunity to get better, but we're going to get through it. We've got three more weekends. Hopefully we get all six of those games in. Um, we're just taking it one weekend at a time. You know, last weekend we went one and one for the first time, you know, in this shortened season. So uh, this will be the last weekend we're at home uh, playing a really good team and Cato just won at Sioux Falls um, Sunday. Uh, they beat us both times last year, the second time they beat us by 30 points. Uh, they're very physical at the guard spots and have big advantage rebounding wise. Um, they're averaging 16 offensive boards a game. They're forcing 24 turnovers a game. Um, some teams have won against them with as many as 30 turnovers. And it's like, how can you win with 30 turnovers? Well, you have to shoot the ball well to make up for losing possessions. So um, in Cato, they play, they play hard, they play frantic. Uh, they, try to, they try to make it an ugly game. And um, it's really a test of your, uh, a test of your patience and ability to stay calm under pressure. Um, a really bright spot from this past weekend was um, Matty Shemins, our freshman point guard, who was forced into a starting role with Emily Keek being concussed. Um, you know, she had 10 points Friday night. Um, I don't know, had like 
four or five assists and zero or one turnover and then backs it up Saturday with a 20 point game was our leading scorer um, played a lot of minutes was competing against a senior point guard uh, Maddie really showed what she's made of and it's exciting to know that uh, we have a freshman that is ready to play college basketball I'm glad you brought her up because I was, I was going to ask you about her performance this weekend, especially, you know, since uh, she was part of that, that that hasn't been able to practice for a couple of weeks. But then I also yeah. wanted to bring up uh, Taylor Husted, who had to come off of concussion, right. not able to right. practice, but she was able to perform this weekend as well. Yeah, she, uh, I think Friday night, she had 16 points, at like nine boards, something like that, which, no, actually, I think she had a double-double on Friday. Yeah. Um, Saturday, I think she had nine boards and eight points, something like that. But, you know, she, uh, you know, she had only, her and Maddie both had only practiced twice in the last 12 or 14 days. Mm -hmm. And for them to perform at the level that they did is remarkable. Um, and we, and we needed it. We really did. Uh, last question here. We got about two minutes left in the segment. As you mentioned, uh, it's the last home weekend against Minnesota State Mankato. Uh, what what can fans expect to see on HBC this weekend if they tune into the games? Well, like I mentioned, uh, Mankato plays uh, extremely fast. They like to pressure the ball and trap and um, try to speed you up and, and mud the game up. Um, they don't play pretty basketball, but their style is effective if they can make you turn it over and and if you don't box them out um they're not a great three-point shooting team and the way they make up for that is by getting second chance opportunities on the boards and by making you turn it over um many times so they can get some open floor easy score opportunities or at least more shots so controlling them is a challenge um you know but uh, it's one of those situations where a lot of times if you don't turn it over, you get a good luck. You get a layup or you get a wide open three. Um, you know, I felt good Friday night and the first half Saturday, we shot the ball. We got really good shots and we shot like 50% from the field. And then, like I already mentioned, the second half uh, as the game went along, we just we quit making shots it's the same shots they were good shots uh, open shots uh, uncontested shots we just we couldn't make and uh you know you got to make shots if you're if you're going to win but uh, i i did like i did like uh, our decision making and shot selection 